Today we are talking all about how to strengthen your intuition and specifically five easy exercises that you can incorporate into your everyday routine. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, welcome to the family. My name is Dina. I am so happy to have you guys here. Number one, we've got automatic writing. Now automatic writing is a really great way to tune into your intuition and get out of your head. Now I'm not gonna lie, it is really easy to get into your head at first. It does take some time, but after a while things start to flow. Now if you're not familiar with automatic writing, this is basically the exercise of just starting to write just whatever comes to you, don't think about it. It's kind of like you're channeling something. So a really good way to do this is actually to sit somewhere where you feel very relaxed. So you can do this like sitting in a beautiful field of flowers, you can sit against a tree. Anywhere outside is really good for this, maybe even by the water, because the water can be very relaxing. And you could realistically do it in your house, but I personally find being out in nature is just very helpful. The main purpose of automatic writing is writing without any sort of specific purpose or any sort of destination in mind. It's like whatever is coming to you so sit be present what's coming to mind what's flowing to you write that down maybe you start receiving messages from your higher self maybe you start channeling from your inner child maybe you receive messages from your spirit guides there's so many different ways that messages can come through you automatic writing is a really good way to receive those it doesn't even have to make complete sense just get it down you can always look back on it and reflect on it later number two we've got speaking to animals and some people think this is weird but but I swear the more you talk to your animals, the more you understand them on a whole new level. I've had like three rats, I had a mouse, a gerbil, a skinny pig. We had a cat way back when I was a kid, but for the most part we've had like very small animals and a lot of people don't fully understand the personalities of them. And my, my family definitely does, like we all love animals, but I used to tell stories about the pets that we've had like they were human beings. I'm like, oh yeah, and they looked at me and they told me this and like <laughs> my brother used to always tease me about this but I swear I knew what they were feeling I knew what they were trying to tell me and I'll give you a specific example of this because we had this most adorable little mouse named Puddin and I will put a picture on the screen for you maybe some video clips because I have so many so she was a rescue from a construction site unfortunately the mother mouse had died and she was brought into my mom's workplace at the time and my mom took her in and between the two of us we gave her milk formula every two hours in the middle of the night we cared for her and everything and she was just one of the most amazing pets I've ever had we just had such a deep connection because we raised her from a baby she didn't even have her eyes open when we first got her Puddin was just such a personality she'd run around and play in my room and stuff and she'd come up to me and hop on my lap and explore the space and we just had this little communication like I could tell in her eyes that she wanted something and she used to like to jump on my shelves and there's certain shelves that she couldn't reach on her own because she's just this tiny little mouse. So she'd look at it and then she'd literally turn around and look at me like, can you please help me? <laughs> and I just, I'd put my hand out and she'd hop on my hand and she'd jump to the shelf and then she'd look at me and she's like, okay, the next shelf. <laughs> and I do that and it was kind of like a little elevator situation that I did for her. But that's just like one story. I just, I felt like I had such a connection with her. And same with a lot of my other animals. Like when you really listen and you really pay attention to animals, you can start to understand what they want, what they need. And I think this is a fantastic way to tune into your intuition. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who are actual animal psychics and they do this for a living. Like they will actually communicate with people's animals, figure out what, they need, why they have certain behavioral problems, whatever it might be. There's people that literally do this for a living. So if this is something that's interesting to you, really paying attention and tuning into the feelings of your animals and talking to them may be a really good place to start for this. The next exercise I would like to share with you to strengthen your intuition is to have an intuitively driven day. I know a lot of us are really driven by structure and I myself am one of those people. I feel like I need to plan out every single part of my day, but learning to flow and and go along with what feels right to you is definitely a really good way to tune into that intuition. Now, yes, there's things that we have to do daily, like we have to work or we have to take care of our, our pets or our kids or whatever it may be, but I'm sure there's some days, at least you have part of the day, 
to yourself or try to book a weekend day to yourself and just have an intuitively driven day. Just like you were as a kid where you just did whatever felt right, did whatever you wanted to do, do that in adult form. <laughs> you could literally do childish things if you wanted. If you wanted to finger paint, go ahead and finger paint. If you wanted to go run around in a field, go run around in the field. Like people may look at you weird, but as long as you're okay and comfortable with yourself, then who cares? Just to give you guys an example, I would say that my intuitively driven day, if I had a day all to myself where I don't have to stress about getting anything done would be to wake up when it feels good. No rush, just wake up when it feels right, when the sun wakes me up and it feels good to get out of bed. Then I would follow that up with some yoga, some easy stretching, maybe some dancing, some movement. Then I would go take a nice hot shower. I'd probably get in some like comfy clothes, but clothes that make me feel good and like, you know, cute and stuff and do maybe a little bit of makeup if I want to, if I'm feeling it. Sometimes I just feel the oh natural. Then I would go downstairs, make myself my favorite breakfast. And if it's a beautiful day out and it's not cold because I live in Canada, <laughs> if it's a beautiful day out, getting outside and going for a beautiful walk, enjoying the sunshine, maybe reading a book on the porch, that kind of thing is my intuitively driven day. Usually there's some card readings in there. Maybe go to a couple little shops, local shops. I love local shops. I love their energy. Here's an example of an intuitively driven day for me. It obviously may vary. Maybe I feel drawn to playing my guitar, maybe whatever. But do whatever feels good to you in that moment. Obviously like there's healthier life choices that you can make. So maybe like buying all the unhealthy food to just stuff your face with isn't the best intuitively driven decision, but I'm not gonna judge you. Do whatever feels right to your body, do whatever feels right to you. All right, so number four is to notice energy. And this is something that you can do any day. You don't have to have a full day off or anything. You can just literally notice energy. So when I say this, I mean notice the energy of the people that you interact with. Notice the energy of the animals that you interact with. Notice the energy of yourself as you go throughout the day, like tap into your body. How do you feel? Really notice the energy of objects, plants, everything that's around you because everything has an energy to it. And once you pay attention, you start to pick up on these things. This is a really great way to tap into your intuition because the more you pay attention to it, the more you're gonna pick up on little signs and signals. It's amazing for yourself too, to get to know yourself and really be able to pick up when something's kind of bothering you or irritating you or when your anxiety taps in. Like it's a really good way to know yourself in a healthy way, but it's a really good way to understand other people and tap into their energy so that one, you can maybe understand them better, but two, also so you can protect your own energy because when you're able to recognize heavier energy or around you, that's when you can actually put up your protective measures, you know, your, your protection spells, shielding, whatever you do to protect yourself from negative energy. You can start to do that better when you're able to recognize the signs. And if you are also a witch like me and you're trying to strengthen your witchcraft abilities, then this is also an amazing exercise for that. Because when you're practicing magic, you want to be aware of energy, you want to be understanding of energy, how it works and how to sense it. So this is a fantastic tool for that. Some questions to maybe ask yourself when you're doing this is, you know, what feelings come to you? What does it feel like in your body? What shape is the energy? What color is the energy? These kind of things help us to make it more tangible for us to understand because we're so used to this 3D world. Over time, you might find that you don't actually use these descriptors anymore. It's just more of like a sensing, more of a feeling. But at first, maybe ask yourself these questions because it may actually really help you with understanding the energy and learning how how to recognize it. All right, so my final tip for you guys today is to journal synchronicities. Editing Dia here, I am so amused right now because I literally just typed in that title page. I was creating it in PicMonkey. And just as I finished typing that out, I checked my phone to see what time it was and it was 111. So I took this picture. I am so amused. This stuff happens to me all the time and it is just great. <laughs> this is a big one. You can do it in a specific little journal. I suggest maybe like a little notepad, something that's easy to bring in a purse or just carry around with you. So whenever a synchronicity comes up, then you can write it down. That's if you're someone who's very like tactile, likes to write in journals, because some people really like that. Some people prefer something really convenient like a phone. So you could literally just have a note specifically for this in your phone. You can put the date, what you saw. Maybe it was an angel number. Maybe you just keep seeing the same animal or something like that. Maybe you were singing a song and then you turn your radio on and that exact same song came on the radio. Has that happened to you guys before? Because that happens to me quite a bit. Sometimes you think about a person and then literally the moment you think about them, they send you a text message or they call you. All these 
these little synchronicities could mean something and you don't want to forget they've happened. So really journaling them and paying attention to them can help you, one, make a little bit of sense of them, but two, help you to notice them more often because the more you pay attention to them, the more you pick up on other synchronicities and the more connected you feel, I find. I feel I am a lot more connected to like my higher self or source or whatever you want to call it these days because I am picking up on these synchronicities, these angel numbers, all that stuff. Let me know in the comments below what exercises do you do daily to heighten your intuitive abilities. I want to know. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I would truly appreciate it. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave because I put up new content every single week and I wouldn't want you guys to miss out on it. I hope you have a beautiful day or night whenever you're watching this and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye, guys.